Welcome to What is Harmful Sexual Behaviour, an introductory webinar presented by Lynx Training and Support. I'd like to start by acknowledging the original custodians of the land on which I'm recording this webinar and the lands on which you're watching. I'd also like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Please note that I'll be talking about some difficult topics during this webinar and you might experience some strong feelings. If you're finding it difficult to stay present, you could try centering yourself with a fidget toy or doodling, taking a few slow breaths, pausing the webinar, standing or moving around as you watch, or having a drink or something to eat. In this webinar, I'll be using the term kids to refer to all children and teens who may be displaying or be at risk of displaying harmful sexual behaviours. I'll make note of specific age ranges when necessary to highlight particular issues and needs. You may have heard of a variety of terms used to describe childhood sexual behaviours, including problematic and abusive. I'll use the term harmful sexual behaviours throughout this webinar, as it's considered the most appropriate terminology to cover a range of behaviours. Harmful sexual behaviours are displayed by kids under 18 years of age. These behaviours are outside what is culturally accepted as developmentally typical. They may be compulsive, obsessive, coercive, aggressive, secretive or violent. They might involve a su substantial difference in the age or developmental ability of those involved. They can be harmful to those displaying the behaviour or others. In this webinar, I'll also introduce a spectrum to help you identify harmful sexual behaviours. Sexual development begins before birth. Anyone who's cared for babies may realise that they frequently explore their bodies when naked. This might happen at times like nappy changes or at bath times. Babies are not sexually motivated to touch or play with their body parts. Young children learn through exploration that touching their sexual body parts can be pleasurable and are more likely to repeat the behaviour. From the age of two, kids generally display increasing sexual behaviours. You might see behaviours like touching of own body parts, looking at other people who are naked, failing to respect personal boundaries, being naked at home or touching the breasts of female caregivers. These behaviours are developmentally expected and usually decrease by the start of puberty. Puberty starts at approximately 10 years of age. The beginning of puberty through to adulthood, known as adolescence, is a significant time of physical and psychological growth. This is also a key period of sexual identity development and exploration. During pu puberty, children become more aware of personal boundaries and what's socially acceptable meaning that others are less likely to witness their sexual behaviours. Throughout adolescence, children's sexual behaviours are likely to include increased interest in potential partners, consensual sexual encounters, and increased interest in looking at nude images. By being aware of what is developmentally expected, you'll be better able to identify concerning sexual behaviours. Let's look further at expected behaviours now. Kids display their emerging sexuality in a range of ways. For prepubescent kids, sexual play supports this development in a positive way. Once kids have reached adolescence, they are more likely to engage in sexual exploration with peers. Sexual play is a consensual experience between children of similar ages. It might include doctor games, where a child who plays the doctor looks at or touches a peer's body parts, as well as you show me yours and I'll show you mine games. Sexual exploration is one way that adolescents experiment with identity formation and expression. It helps them determine who they are and how they fit into the world. Sexual exploration refers to consensual experiences with same age peers. This might include a range of increasingly intimate behaviours such as hand holding, kissing, touching, oral sex and intercourse. The way kids express their sexuality will depend on their sexual identity and orientation. Sexual identity relates to how they see and express themselves, whereas sexual orientation is the gender or genders they are attracted to. Sexuality is not a choice and is largely determined prior to birth. 
kids may take time to develop and fully understand and express their sexual identity. Its development can span into adulthood and is influenced by culture, religion, society, family and care environments. If sexual play and exploration are considered developmentally appropriate behaviours, you may wonder how you can tell when behaviours are harmful. As I've mentioned, sexual behaviours are a normal part of development. These behaviours fall across the spectrum from age-appropriate sexual behaviours to very concerning sexual behaviours. Age-appropriate sexual behaviours are those that are developmentally normal and expected. Concerning sexual behaviours are behaviours outside what is developmentally expected for kids and may be persistent or frequent and are likely to place them at risk. Very concerning behaviours are behaviours that may involve victimisation. These behaviours may be compulsive and place those displaying them or others at risk of physical or psychological harm. The spectrum of behaviours is pictured on the slide. Be aware that this is a guide, but is not a definitive list. If you are supporting kids with concerning or very concerning behaviours, you should gain specialist support. To determine where behaviours sit on the spectrum, specialists will also consider context, which is how and where the behaviours occur, and per pervasiveness, which refers to the persistence and frequency of the behaviours. So there are many reasons that kids develop harmful sexual behaviours. Research shows that childhood trauma is a significant risk factor. This might include repeated distressing experiences like physical abuse, domestic and family violence, neglect, being sexually abused, exposure to sexual activity of others, and is exposure to sexually explicit material. Other identified risk factors include family adverse, adversity issues such as low socioeconomic status, parent and caregiver instability, homelessness, parental substance abuse, and removal from parents. You may have heard that being a victim of sexual abuse is the main cause of harmful sexual behaviour. However, kids who display harmful sexual behaviours have usually experienced multiple risk factors. While those who have been sexually abused may display these behaviours, the experience of sexual abuse alone is unlikely to predict future harmful sexual behaviour. The majority of kids who have been sexually abused do not go on to display harmful sexual behaviour. Most kids in out-of-home care have experienced multiple and complex traumas, as well as family adversity issues, increasing their risk of developing harmful sexual behaviours. For this reason, the early intervention strategies we'll explore in future webinars are extremely important. Kids with harmful sexual behaviours often have other emotional, behavioural or developmental concerns, such as learning deficits, poor social skills, oppositional behaviours and conduct or impulse control problems. Older kids may also engage in non-sexual criminal behaviours. With the right supports, kids are unlikely to continue harmful sexual behaviours into adulthood. However, ongoing therapeutic supports for trauma, mental health and behavioural concerns are often still required. There are many reasons why kids display harmful sexual behaviours. These reasons are often similar for kids of all ages, although there are certain key differences. Prior to puberty, harmful sexual behaviours may be due to curiosity, exploration, imitation, attention seeking or self-soothing. Adolescents might display these behaviours for the same reasons, but also to gain sexual gratification. Behaviour is often shaped by environments and experiences. Kids also engage in harmful sexual behaviours due to the context or situation they are in, or their life experiences. Harmful sexual behaviours may develop when kids have difficulty understanding and developing relationships as a way of modelling the power and control they've experienced, or to regain command of the, their lives and environments. Behavioural or developmental concerns can also contribute. These behaviours can have significant impact upon the child displaying them, as well as the target of the behaviours. So regardless of the reason why kids display harmful sexual behaviours, it's important to address the behaviours early and we'll explore response strategies in future webinars. So thank you for watching this webinar. Please browse our website for more information on harmful sexual behaviours. And you'll also 
find a range of resources on trauma-informed care, which is a key early intervention strategy for harmful sexual behaviours. Once again, thank you.